offered the example, took the vow of Nazareth. Obviously, their leader did, who Man. happened to be Jesus Man. in the natural. Now, Jesus being from the tribe of Judah, you know that he had taken the vow because he was from the offspring of David. Yeah. We read in First Chronicles about when David sent the spies, or rather the messengers who the heathen thought were spies, mm -hmm. and how what they did, the first thing they did was shave their beard. Yeah. And we know that they cut their hair, using line upon line and precept on precept, and stripped them naked from the waist down and sent them back to David in a form of deep humiliation. I'm using this in the context. If David's men had taken the vow, you know David took the vow also. Amen. And if Jesus preceded and came forth from the tribe of Judah through the lineage of Jesse, who was the father of David, then you know he also took the vow as well as his apostles. Now again, if you research the history and some of the uh, reference material on Jesus, you will find that it says he had a beard and at his crucifixion they pulled out his beard. Amen. And y'all don't know what it feel like. When you sometimes when you drag that comb through your beard, uh, amen. Amen. <laughs> you flinch. Oh, oh yeah. Amen. So to pull your beard out, and we know that in these reference books, he had shoulder-length hair. Yeah. Now, I'm going in this direction. If he did so, which was the vow of the Nazarite, and you take Paul's instruction in 1 Corinthians 11 chapter that men ought not to have long hair, I said it's impossible for the term long to be applied in that context because the difference in the semantics of words when you're dealing with different ethnic people, what is regarded as long. That's right, Prophet. So in the oh, Greek study Bible, in the reference uh, column it says here, let me read, the verb kameo from kome, hair, means to have long hair or to fix the hair in such a way as to distinguish a woman from a man. Amen. Now that's in the Hebrew Greek translated Bible. Now what I'm trying to show you, uh, there is a order that people have. I'm not against a person getting a haircut, though you don't know where the haircut come from. That's right. Amen. A haircut never actually was even popular nope. until uh, the late 1800s, early 1900s, That's right. people let their hair grow. But I'm trying to show you, when you're trying to use words as length of hair, long hair, what is long hair to one group and what is long hair to another group? Amen. Now, if you try to bring uh, Jesus into a, an equation of an ethnic background, you're getting yourself in a whole lot of trouble. Right, right. Amen. So, to, to try to just bring you a clear teaching. We know he had shoulder length hair. We know he had a beard. Amen. We know he had to be a Nazarite, a vow of Nazarite. And I also want to clear up about Nazarene. Maybe some of y'all misinterpreted me. I, I dealt with this in times past. And I, I, you know I know there's a difference between Nazarite and Nazarene. That's right, right. What I was trying to say last, uh, the other night when I gave that teaching of this pastor, I don't want to call his name, but uh, he had never heard of the vow of the Nazarite. So he thought I was talking about Nazarene, but I was not talking about Nazarene. Now I got enough sense to know Jesus was also called the Nazarene. Yeah. Now why was he called the Nazarene? Because his father worked and lived in Nazareth, That's where right. he grew up in Nazareth. So that he was often referred to as the Nazarene because he grew up in Nazareth. That's right. Now, uh, that is totally different than Nazarite. Teach, prophet. Nazarite is a vow. Amen. A committed vow that a, a, a man makes or a woman makes for her son that comes into the world. As did Hannah, when Hannah made the commitment to her son to have the vow of the Nazarite until the day he died. Now, uh, there's a question uh, whether Jesus held the Nazarite vow to his death. You have to understand, uh, again, when we take a, a, a festival as he did, the, the drink of the festival, whether it was a wedding or death 
or one of the religious festivals, the drink was grape juice, unfermented right. wine. Now, the Nazarite vow had nothing to do with a festival, because a festival is a special occasion. What they were, what they're trying to separate themselves from, was the common activity, whereas people drank uh, bread juice like you drink iced tea and and, and pop and uh, uh, sometimes water. So what what they were doing was making a a, a difference between the normal lifestyle of, of participating in that type of, of uh, living standard and they did not take partake of uh, anything that had to do with the grape Amen. whether it was dried or raisins or, or however they didn't partake in it except during a festival now we take the grape juice on the, the when we take the communion yes. part but the, that's not grape juice it's, it's grape juice, but it's symbolic of the blood of Jesus. Amen. So when Jesus said he would not partake of the fruit of the vine, that didn't mean that he used to drink grape juice. It meant that he was going to his crucifixion in a few days, and that he would not be able to take part in any festival because he wouldn't be around anymore. Amen. Amen. So you have to understand. Now, let me go this direction. If it, if it were not the way I'm saying then you got a whole lot of conflict and confusion in the Bible. That's right, Prophet. And the Bible is not a book of confusion. Amen. If he took the vow of the Nazarite, he didn't drink grape juice. Well, he took grape juice at the Last Supper. But that was a festival occasion. Yes. So you got to understand the difference. Yes. And I hope people can have a clear and understand. That's why everybody's not sent to preach. That's right, Prophet. Everybody's not sent to teach this way. But when I teach you, I try to show you foundational yes, scripture right. and then line on line and preach it, don't preach it, so that you can come together with a rightly divided yes. scripture and its perfect understanding. Mm -hmm. And there should be no confusion. Mm -hmm. The Bible is not a book of confusion. It's man who don't know how to interpret the scripture. Yes. That's where all the confusion uh, uh, comes from. Right, and 99.9% right. .9 of them ought to sit down and shut up. Because they don't have the slightest concept of what they're doing. Amen. Now, uh, I want you to take note in, let me get my, uh, Leviticus 21, verse uh, 4 and 5. Amen. But he shall not defile himself, being a chief man among his people, to profane himself. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Well, they shall not make what? Baldness Amen. upon their head. You can't take a razor and shave your head like uh, Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. God said don't do that. Yes. First of all, it's a heathen custom. Mm -hmm. Well, someone said, well, the Levi priests did that. But they did it in a time of mourning. That was an expression yeah. of extreme mourning. Yeah. That was a festival occasion for, again, extreme mourning. And that was the only time where they uh, would shave their heads, and that was a Levite priest. Now, again, the custom came from, and the haircut, that y'all don't know, mm -hmm. came from the Babylonians and crept into Egypt. If you ever noticed the movie The Ten Commandments, That's right. some of y'all see it. Amen. Pharaoh had his hair shaved That's right. and a turf of hair up here, and so did his son. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what God meant when he said, You shall not uh, make baldness between the eyes. Another passage of scripture. Yes. Somebody said, What are you talking about? Arching eyebrows. It could include uh, uh, arching eyebrows, but that's not what the text yeah. is about. The text is about shaving the head like the Egyptians shaved their head. When God brought his people from Egypt, he said, don't learn their customs or don't remember Egypt anymore. Amen. Is that right? I mean, we well, shake that the other night in Ezekiel around the 22nd chapter, 21st, 22nd chapter. All right, so again, I'm trying to show you the importance of what is taking place. We have the vow of the Nazareth and we're going to hold on to it because of who don't like it, Amen. who don't understand it. And again, for people who get bent out of shape, I never said the Nazarite vow had anything to do with salvation. It does not. Let me say it again. 
The Nevermind has nothing to do with salvation. But 